It all began when I was just a boy in Kiev. I dreamed that I was abroad a beautiful, luxurious ship. And even in my dream, I knew the ship was flying. Of course, I was told that flying machines were impossible. But I had seen those drawings by Leonardo da Vinci. And I heard about Count Zeppelin and the feats of the Wright brothers. And I imagined what wonderful things these airships could do. So, I dedicated my life to the study of aeronautics. In 1909, this was neither an industry nor even a science. It was an art, and I might say a passion. I built my little helicopters, contraptions really. They couldn't lift a pilot, but they taught me everything I need to know that with time and resources, vertical flight was possible. I turned my attention to fixed-wing aircraft. In those early days, the chief engineer was almost always the chief pilot as well. This had the automatic result of eliminating poor engineering very early in aviation. And so we made planes and learned how to fly them at the same time. In 1913, I realized my dream of a grand airship the first plane designed with an enclosed cockpit and cabin, powered by four engines. For that accomplishment, I was given a gold watch by the Tsar himself. After the Great War, I emigrated to America. Here, like so many others, I found the confirmation of my hopes. In 1923, I founded Sikorsky Aero Engineering Corporation. It was a dangerous business, and the greatest danger was starvation. Then in 1927, Charles Lindbergh proved the viability of aviation. Overnight, it changed from a hobby to a profession. We were in business. I worked on my American Clipper, master of sea and air. It established American airline operation across all the oceans and we developed amphibians for the Navy too. Take a tip from an old man. Truth in politics is optional. Truth in engineering is mandatory. But always at the back of mind was the helicopter. Nothing could come as close to fulfilling mankind's ancient dream of the flying horse and the magic carpet. I knew you could never fly as fast as an airplane or as efficiently, but I knew the helicopter could do jobs that nothing else could. A plane could spot a man in trouble, a helicopter could rescue him. I was determined to succeed. In autumn 1939, I donned my favorite fedora and climbed into my latest helicopter. We lifted, only for a few minutes, but the essentials were right. The dream had become real. By the summer of 1942, the United States military had its first working helicopters. Innovations were made continuously as we sought to fit the machine to the infinite needs of mankind. I had always believed that the helicopter would be an outstanding vehicle for the greatest variety of life-saving missions. I have the satisfaction of knowing that this proved to be true. And we are not through, as long as we let our imaginations take us beyond the impossible. Even a little boy in Russia knows that. Creative work is still with us. It's here to stay. A tremendously vital factor in the progress of mankind. The work of the individual still remains the spark that moves mankind ahead.